Presented her and blessed her with money. She is also restored. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Every morning at 6 a.m. from Monday to Friday, we have our morning prayer, which is at 7 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Our midday service starts at 5 to 12, and then we have our evening service, which starts at half past six every night. Our midnight prayer starts at five to twelve every night, and we also have our weekly plan fasting, which is on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. The details of the fasting are shared on our different WhatsApp groups. Amen. And to those who want to partake in the blessings of the Lord through tithes and offerings, the banking details are shared on our different WhatsApp groups, on Messenger, as well as on our different mm-hmm. Facebook platforms. Amen. Tonight we will read the Word of God from the book of Luke chapter 9 from verse 26 NIV. It reads as follows. Whoever is ashamed of me and by my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving, Jesus As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. Amen. 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 Also tonight we'll have a privilege going through the word of God together. Believing the word of God to be taught with power. Power of the Holy Spirit. Power to heal, power to bless, power to protect in the name of Jesus. Let us go to the book of Luke chapter 9, verse number 26. The Bible says that whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and uh, in the glory of the Father and of the angels. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Jesus Christ speaking. Jesus said, Whoever will be ashamed of him and his words, even the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he come in his glory and in the glory of the Father and uh, of the holy angels. That means the Bible is saying that here what Jesus Christ is talking about is that, um, you know, as a child of the living God, we need to be to be the representer of Jesus Christ. We need to be proud of the gospel that we have received. We need to be proud of Jesus Christ whom we have received as our Lord and our Savior. Be proud of him. Be proud that you are born again. And when the day comes when you have to stand for Jesus Christ, when you have to witness for Jesus Christ, when that day arrives, be pre- be proud of it. Talk about Amen. him. Don't shy away that you are a you are a Christian. You know sometimes 
some people they shy away that they are Christians or they are the children of the living God. But as a children of the living God, we must never shy away that you are saved. You must never hide that you are a child of the living God. But we need to be proud of it. We need to show it that yes, I'm born again. Washed by the blood, saved by the grace. I'm the child of the living God and I stand for Jesus Christ. Because it's each, each and every one of us who are born again, we are called to represent Jesus Christ. We are called to live for Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 16, that don't you know that you yourself, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit and God's Spirit lives in you. And God's spirit dwells Amen. among you. That means as a child of God, you are called to live for Jesus, to live for God. That's why also when the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is in you, Jesus Christ put that Holy Ghost in you. Jesus is in your heart. Jesus Christ is in you so that we may represent him so that we may live for him. Then when the time Amen. has arrived to stand for Christ, to talk for him, be proud of it. Be proud of it. Do it diligently. Chest out. Proud that you are a child of the living God and don't shy away that you are saved. Don't shy away to be saved. There is, I want to tell you that it's a child of the living God. There is nothing that can be ever be compared with your salvation. No, salvation is one of the greatest things that you can ever receive in the whole, or in the whole of this world. I want you to get it. I want you to believe it. Salvation is the best thing that um, that we anyone can ever receive in this world to be saved to be the child of the living God to be Christ is one of the best things that you can ever achieve in this world Amen. that's why the Bible says that in the book of John chapter 3 verse number 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever will believe upon him shall be saved and have everlasting life. That means the Bible says that for God have so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believe upon him shall be saved and have everlasting life. That means now when you are saying that you are saved, that means you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And as we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we have received eternal life, the God kind of life. And today as we speak, Amen. we are the children of the living God. And as the children of the living Amen. God, it's one of the best things that you can, anybody can ever receive, anybody can ever be. Amen. That's why the Bible says that from the book of John chapter 1 verse number 12. Yet to all those who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descendant, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Bible says that, yet to all those who did receive Jesus Christ, to those who believed in the name of Jesus Christ, he gave them the right to become the child of God. Then in salvation, Amen. when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, the first of all, the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on the cross of Calvary, came and washed away all of our sins. And God forgives, God forgets. And that wonderful blood of Jesus Christ dwelt in us who are saved, dwells in you to ensure that you become the child of the living God. 
and you are the child of the living God. After when you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you are not ordinary person. You have got God kind of life. You have got the God kind of life. You have got the nature of God in you. That's what the Bible says that children not born of natural descent nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. Then when you Amen. are born of God, like that, when you've received the God kind of nature, is one of the best things that you can ever receive in this lifetime. Mm. It's one of the best things that you can ever be and ever receive in this lifetime because it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes we think one of the best things that you can receive in this lifetime is qualifications. There is nothing wrong with qualification. There is nothing wrong with all the qualifications. But you can receive qualifications. May it be the doctorate of this world. May it be this or that. I don't know what is the better qualifications. But the day that you check out, if you check out out of this world, you come out of this world without meeting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and without accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you can die. That person who died without Jesus Christ but with qualification, maybe five doctorate, that person, according to the word of God, will die and go to hell. And that's what the Bible says, that what will profit a man? What will profit a man when he gained the whole world yet forfeit his soul? What will profit a man when he gained the things of this world yet forfeit his soul? Because, you know, salvation is a qualification that saves your soul. It's not a qualification that helps you. You know, yes, there are bonuses of salvation. But it's, first of all, greatest of all, is a qualification. When we talk about qualification that helps you to go to heaven, we're talking about salvation. Amen. That's what salvation is meant for. It's meant yeah. to be able to help us that one day, First of all, we can be able to make it to heaven. We can become the children of the living God. We can receive supernatural life and we become the children of the living God. That's what we are talking Amen. about, salvation. But without Amen. salvation, a person can receive whatever qualification the things of this world yet lose their soul and go to hell forever at the place of torment then that's why one of the best things that anybody can ever be anybody can ever receive is jesus christ in this world is jesus christ then you know one of the then you know if we are saying that, you know, people must achieve things, one of the greatest achievement and what is supposed to be first achievement in this world must be salvation. Salvation starts the day that the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached to us, is preached to you. And once it has been preached to you, you receive it and you believe that indeed Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God who came into the world and died for your sins and died and he came back to life. But after that day, you begin to, we, we begin to live by his word. We begin to live for him. After living for him, we walk with him as a Christian life working out our salvation because that's why one does not need to be saved and relax because otherwise there are those who say that i'm saved i'm going to heaven and they relax and they think that everything is going to be well just because they are saved can't know we have to work our salvation we have to work our salvation when you talk about working for our salvation 
uh, when you're working out salvation, whatever you're doing with those things that we're talking about, which included in work, working your salvation, they help you to grow in Christ. You are actually growing in Christ. As you are growing in Christ, growing in faith, growing in word, growing in activities of Christ, growing in serving. As you grow up in like that, you begin to see the benefits of salvation also in this world. And they are coming yeah. as a result of your growth, as a result of your faith, the result of faith in this world. Amen. Then some people, they think, okay, Amen. once you are saved, you just have to relax. Once you are saved, as long as you are saved, everything is going to be fine. No! We work out mm. our salvation. As we are working Amen. out our salvation, part of it, you need to be proud of Christ Jesus. Represent Jesus. Proud of Jesus Christ. That's another thing that we ought to know and ought to understand. You need to be proud of Christ. Be proud of him. Okay, let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 10. As we are still talking about this, Matthew chapter 10, verse number 32. In the book of Luke chapter 9, verse number 26, the Bible says that Jesus talks about whoever is ashamed of me and my words. Uh, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. And the Bible Amen. says that in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse number 32, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disown Amen. me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Okay, you are working, you are working out your salvation. As you are working out your salvation as a child of the living God, part of it, you know, you are, you are a representer, a representer of Jesus Christ who is meditating upon the word of God. After meditating upon the word of God, listening to the word of God, meditating upon the word of God, applying the word of God, standing for Christ. Standing for Christ, representing Christ. Not ashamed of Christ, not ashamed of the word of God. We need not to be ashamed of it. We need not to be ashamed of him. We need not to be, we need to be so proud of Christ, so proud of your salvation, showing that you are the child of the living God and you are, we are saved. As we're still talking about this, I want us to pass through the book of Joshua chapter 1. The Bible says that, let us read from verse number, number 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I want us to understand, to underline and highlight keeping the book of the law always on your lips. On this portion of meditation, you are also talking the word. The word have become the portion, part of your confession. The word of, have become, apart from be, it being applied, it has become part of your speech. You speak the word. You speak the word. That's a part of it. That's why Jesus said that. Do not be ashamed of me and my words. But if you're not ashamed of it, not ashamed of the word of God, what do you do? You meditate. You keep the book of the law on your lips. You talk the word. Some people, they are so mad. They are even ashamed to speak the word of God. They are even ashamed to post, to share a Christian post, to share a verse of the Bible. No! 
It's part of meditating. You get the word of God, you paste it. Let them see you are saved. Let them see you are saved. Let them see you eat the word. Let them say, see that you are saved. Yes, let them see that you are a child of God. You are, hey, the word of God must become your banner. The word of God must become your banner, must become your signature. Amen. Amen. You must be able to post it. You must enjoy seeing the word of God in your status. You must enjoy seeing the word of God in your wall. You must enjoy seeing the word of God in your clothes. You must enjoy seeing the word of God in your car. You must enjoy seeing the word of God in your surrounding. That's what you want. Sometimes you are no longer just posting it for others. You are even posting it for yourself. So that you see it. You see that word of God. You remember it. You are, it's part of your meditation. You know, you must find that if there are a lot of things that must symbolize in your life the word of God with an inscription of the word of God, there must be an inscription of the word of God in your surrounding. One of your greatest and our greatest decoration in our life must be the decoration of the word. The decoration of the word. Where you decorate things with the word. That's very, very much important. And the Bible says that that is the part of keeping the book of the law always on your lips. And you is part of meditating on the meditating on the word of God day and night. Then the Bible says that after that you will be careful to do everything written in it. And the Bible says that automatically after that, then you will be prosperous and successful. Success will come easy. Success will come easy. Success will not come with struggle because you are meditating upon the word of God. Okay, according to the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse number 32, he says that, Jesus said that, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. I will Amen. acknowledge before my Father in heaven. That means Jesus said that when you talk about him, when you talk about him before others, he will talk about you before his father in heaven. When you are posting the word, when you are posting the word, as you are posting the word, hey, Jesus Christ is proud of you. Jesus Christ is proud of you. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is proud of you, is proud of you as far as to talk about you before his father in heaven. When you talk about Jesus, you become famous in heaven. If you want to be famous in heaven, part of it, talk about Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Don't be ashamed of him. There are more blessings. There are more blessings when you represent Christ. There are more blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are more blessings when we represent Christ, when we talk about him. And the Bible says that, you know, in the book of Luke chapter 9, verse number 28. Let us read 26. It says that, Whoever is ashamed of me and my words is not all about you. His words. I want to, you know, like there's something about his words and his word. When just to underline it to say that there is something about his word, we can also pass through the book of John, chapter 15. 
Aleluya. Amen. Say fire, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Fire, ya, yeah. Say, I love the word of God. I love, I love the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. I am enjoying the word of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Verse number 23 of John 15. The Bible said that whoever... Uh, let us read from verse number... Manrovrason Talabahaya. Okay. John 14 from verse number 23. The Bible said that Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. And my Father will love them. And when we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. And these words you hear are not my own. They belong to my Father who sent me. Okay. This is Jesus Christ speaking. Jesus Christ, you know, like someone may be asking, how do I show Jesus I love him? How do I show Jesus I love him? Jesus said that anyone who wants to show Jesus that he loves Jesus, verse number 23, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. And my father we will love them and will come and make our home. Our, our home with them. I want to tell you this. Amen. You know, you cannot obey what you do not know. You cannot obey what you do not know. First of all, before we talk about obeying the word of God, obeying the teachings of Jesus Christ, trying to show Jesus Christ to love him by obeying his word and obeying his teachings first of all we must meditate upon his word then it all starts by meditating the word of god as you are meditating it becomes a proof that you love jesus christ Amen. before when we go before we go to the book of um let us go again go back to the book of uh joshua chapter one Okay, it says that verse number 8, keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night. This is the portion. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then the Bible says that before you do everything written in the word of God, first of all, you meditate upon the word of God. You keep the book of the law on your lips. Then, after that, meditating upon the word of God, then you are able to carefully do everything that is written in it. And that means meditation comes before obeying. Meditation comes before practicing the word of God. And somebody wants to show that Jesus Christ, I love you so much. That means it must start by meditation, by loving the word of God. That's what he's talking about. That's what we just read from the book of John. That is saying that if you love me, you will obey my command. Then meditation, meditation will lead to obeying the word of God. It will lead to practice the word of God. Then if you love Jesus, you will meditate. You will love the word of God. And that will be a proof of your love. Then that's what he's talking about. Whoever. Then that means you won't be ashamed. Jesus is saying that he's trying to say that we must not be ashamed of him. And his word. So that he may also represent you in heaven talk about you before the Father. Talk about us before Amen. angels. And the Bible says that it won't end about Jesus Christ representing us today. The Bible says that the Son of... Eh, then, when He comes in His glory 
and in the glory of the Father, of his angels. That means he's talking about even beyond this lifetime, based on how you have represented Jesus Christ, talk about Jesus Christ. He will also not be ashamed of you when he comes back. Mm. Then, it, you know, it's an investment beyond time. Amen. What you're talking about is an investment beyond time. That's what you are hearing, what, hearing what Jesus Christ is talking about. Because he's talking also, hey, the son of man, he is talking about will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of holy angels. When he comes, when is that? That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. But that means that meditation, practicing the word of God, representing Christ Jesus, serving Christ, Amen. it becomes an investment beyond time. Then, child of God, be proud of your salvation. Stand for your salvation. Stand for your master. Stand for Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Find every opportunity that you get to preach it. Find every opportunity that you find to stand for him. Stand Amen. for him. And you know how to score those points? It's when we stand for him even in unfavorable conditions. It's easy among the brethren, among the Christians to go like I'm born again. But Jesus Christ is not only talking about standing for Jesus Christ among the brethren, among those who are saved only, even among those who are not saved. Because Jesus said, like what we were talking about a few days ago, he said that go ye into the world and preach the, preach the gospel to all creation, that whoever will believe and will be baptized will be saved. We score more points standing for Jesus Christ, talking about him, even to those who are not saved, even to those who does not love him. Who doesn't want to hear the name Jesus? That's when the name Jesus becomes more powerful. And that's where there is more grace, not on your comfort zone. May God help us to stand for Christ, represent Christ, talk for Christ, even in unfavorable conditions. Because we are true Christians. We are those who are proud of who they've become, whom we've become, the children of God. We are so proud, to be proud of it. That everybody knows that you are a child of God. Against all the odds. Doesn't matter who they call you at, at the end. Let them do so. But the Bible says that blessed are you when you are persecuted because of my name. That's what the Bible says that. You are more blessed when you, when you reach a place where you begin to say, somebody say that, uh-uh. If I look to this person's status, it's only verses. If I look to this person's wall, it's all about Jesus. I don't. When if they, if some people begin to say that you're always talking about Jesus, and they begin saying they don't want to associate you, that you are becoming more according to the word of God. When they begin to dissent you because you are boring. Hmm. I wish I'm talking to somebody. When they begin to say that you are boring, you are always playing the gospel, gospel songs. You are always playing the sermons. You are always talking about Jesus. The Bible says that when they begin to persecute you because of that, then now you are more blessed. If you are beginning to say Jesus in your conversations, and those who are demon-possessed are not comfortable anymore, this one is always talking about Jesus. Some they say that, oh, when we became friends, I thought this one was a normal person. It's not normal, oh. 
Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the afternoon, Jesus in his dreams. It's not normal, oh. It's Jesus everywhere. Yes, you are blessed according to the word of God. We are not trying to fit in. We are not. The Bible says that be transformed by renewing your mind. Then you will be able to know what God, what God, what pleases God is. We need to be transformed by renewing your mind. Not to, not to, not to be trans, not to be able to to fit. We we need not to be able to fit in. They need to begin to realize you are not normal. Child of God, you are not normal. I'm saying that the, the fact that you are born again, it means that you are born again. You are not normal. You are not ordinary. Then those who come close to you, if they are worldly, they need not to be comfortable with you. They must begin to say there is something abnormal about you. Then, then, yes. What the Bible talks about in the book of Second Corinthians chapter five, verse number seventeen, about you is a reality. If any man is in Christ, the new creation, behold, the old has passed away, the new has come. Then that is it becomes a reality. You must be boring to the world. You must be boring. If the world still enjoys being with you, enjoys your talk, enjoys your time, there is you are not yet there. Child of God, according to the world, you must be boring. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. You must be boring. An ordinary person who's not born again. Ah, so no, later they must find out that there's something wrong with you. <laughs> There's too much. When they begin to say that you are begin to become boring, that means there is too much Jesus in you. You have begin to to radiate Christ likeness, and that's what you know, are trying to achieve. But if there is no Christ likeness, the world will be just enjoying. Then you are not yet transformed. But child of God, be ye transformed. Allow the word of God to work. Allow the salvation to gukula you, to turn you around, to be like Christ. Then when you become like Christ, the world will find you boring. I'm, I'm saying to you, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you now, the world, when you are being transformed, but it's not that you are boring. No, to a child of the living God, no, you are not boring. In Christ, when Christ look at you, you are not boring. Is that those who are in the world, because their life and your life, their standard and your standard are not the same. But at the end of the day, they must end up saying, Ha, when I prayer, 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 when I hey, word, 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 when I always prayer, always fasting, uh uh, uh uh. When do we eat now? Always. Yes. Christ has taken over you. You are enjoying the spiritual things. You by that time you are enjoying prayer. You by that time you are enjoying the presence of God. You are enjoying the glory of the Lord. But somebody who's in the world. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, when do we go to the party now? Amen. No holiday, yes. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Angria Sofradia Sakia Tupaki. Wherever you are, begin to pray. Begin to pray that Christ may fully manifest in you. That's my prayer for you. Until the world becomes, they, they begin to regard you as boring because you are not of this world. Andrea Froduso Kotolobo Shikata Rabakade, Andrea Soprada Santa Rabayando Lobo Sianda Labagi, Andrea Sofrada Satiande, 
Ando lo kriando sopradia sopradi Anda kalabashi anda rabayade E rabasonto lo boshi anda raba E re ba 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 Shanta la basonta rabashi anda rabayade Manta rabashi anda raba Araba sonto lo bosanda la ba Yanda raba baba sonto lo bosanda la ba Yekere baba basondo lo bosanda la ba Yekere baba basondo lo bo Yekere baba baba sondo lo bosanda la ba Araba sondo robo shanda rabayade Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Fire, Holy Ghost, Fire, 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 I command them to the army. Anything which is not of God. Anything, anything which is not of God. In my life. In my life. In my body. In my in my body. In my career. In my in my career. In our countries. In our, in our countries, in every sector of my life, in every, in sector, every of sector of my life, catch fire now, 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 catch fire now. Catch fire now. I command them. I command them. I command them. Come out. Come out. 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 I command them to the abyss. I command, I command them, them to the abyss. Say, so let there be miracle jobs. Let there be miracle Let jobs. Be miracle jobs. Miracle jobs. Miracle jobs. Say I command. I command. I command. Everything to turn around for my good. Everything, everything to turn around, to turn for, around my for my good. Say so let there be progress. Let there be progress in every sector of my life. In every sector, in every of, sector my of my life. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, Lord Christ, Jesus Christ. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your Wash blood. Me with your blood. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me, Forgive my, me sins. my sins. Bless me today. Bless me today. Protect me from today. Protect me from today. Protect me from today. From today. From today. I am born again. I am born again. I am, born again. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. In the name of Jesus. In the name, In the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Anointing, you know, when we talk about this anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, it will change you and you will enjoy the things of above, not the things of the world. And uh, you will have life in Christ, but not life of the world. 
life in Christ, not the life of the world. That's what this thing is all about. We don't get anointing. We don't get the anointing of the presence of God to fit into the world. No, we are not trying to fit into the world. He has saved us from the world. We are saved from the world. Then the things of the world, you will never enjoy them. The things of the world that I speak to our life, you will never enjoy them. But you will enjoy heavenly things. That's what the, this thing is all about. Anyway, tomorrow is that fasting that we were talking about on the on the other day. We're gonna connect Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Connect uh, will be uh, during the day. We will be only can drink, but during the evening, we're not gonna be eating meat. Uh, we're not gonna be eating meat, pap and rice. But uh, only for these three days. So that means it's different from other weekly prayer and fasting because we are connecting three days, this one. And I want to say to us this evening, let us share the grace and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of the God. Love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit be with us all. Be with us all. Be Surely with us goodness all. and love. Surely goodness, Surely and, love goodness and love shall follow me. Shall follow me. Follow me. All the days of my life. All the days of my All life. Days of my life. And, I and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the name of Jesus. In the name in the of Jesus. Jesus. I want to say to us this evening, may God bless you. Have a blessed and a wonderful night in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.